just as a quick walkthrough on using Splunk, obviously the first thing you're going to do is go to the Splunk website and sign up. So now that we've entered all the relevant information, we're going to go ahead and just sign up here. Go ahead and create your account. A couple more things to do here. We're going to get an email verifying that we in fact signed up correctly, so it'll take a few moments. Once you do that, you'll be able to log in and get going with the product. There's a couple different products here. Once you sign up, there's the Splunk Enterprise and the Splunk Cloud. One is more of a service, one is software. I'll kind of show you both here. We'll first sign up with the free cloud trial, and I think you get up to about five gigabytes of data. Once we do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and think about downloading some of the tutorial files. Here's the user interface when you, when you buy the service. And this is essentially Splunk installed for you in a cloud. Later in this module, we're going to do that ourselves on our own VM. But let's go ahead and download the um, sample files. These will be necessary once we walk through the tutorials later in this section here. In fact, we'll be importing the tutorial data zip file directly, which has a number of different files in it. So we're going to unzip prices. Simply place it in the same directory as all your other Splunk data. Once we do that, we're going to carry on and do some more exploration of the product. So here we are at a Linux prom prompt. I have a Splunk directory, and we're going to download the enterprise tools. I'm running Ubuntu, so I'm going to download the dev file here. And you can just go ahead um, and enter this URL along with the wget command. This is available at the Splunk website, kind of walks you through these steps. So we're going to go ahead and just download this big dev file, and then we'll do a package install. Now what, that, what that's going to do is install um, a web service onto my Linux VM here, which I can um, connect up to from the outside world. In my case, a Windows machine that has a browser. My Linux VM here has no browser, so I'm not going to be able to actually see the web service um, expressed as a website directly here. It's a fairly sizable download. I'll kind of abbreviate this quickly so we can get through it and um, start working with the tool. Let's take a look at this file. Pretty good size. Let's go ahead now and um, show you where you would get this command. Here's the website from Splunk. So anyway, easy to find. Let's look at this dev file. Let's do a dpackage install here of this dev file. Once again, this is going to install the enterprise software for Splunk locally on this VM to which I will connect to with the browser once this completes. Once this is done, it's going to leave you essentially with um, the ability to uh, import some of the data files that we um, downloaded a moment ago. But before we do that, let's fix up our environment to put Splunk into the path. So I'm here into my bash rc file, and I'm going to say Splunk home is going to be equal to op slash Splunk, and then I'm going to basically concatenate that into my path here. So I'll go down here below here to my bash rc file and add the Splunk home environment variable as part of my path. So notice here I'll just say dollar Splunk home, and there we have it. So we'll quickly save this um, and do a quick source to make this particular um, bash file active, this bash rc startup script. So let's go ahead and just type in source, bash rc, now that's active. We can now um, clear the screen and start um, working with the product. At this point, I'm just going to go ahead and type in the Splunk start command. And it's going to go through a big, huge um, file here for me to agree to the license. I'm just going to type in y for yes, therefore agree. And you'll notice here that it's going to leave me with an endpoint to connect up to. It'll take just a moment to get, a moment to get there. And it's going to be the name of my VM, my data store, WAC 8000. Now I have a more robust path. Let's go to the portal and see what the real address of this Linux VM is here. And perhaps even open up port 8000. There you see the DNS label for my Azure-based Linux VM. Let's go ahead into network interfaces. Go ahead and click on the only network interface here and get into the network security groups. And I have a number of ports here open already. Let's go ahead and open yet another port here. 
to uh, the Flex Splunk. So there you see it's essentially port um, 8000 that I'm going to open here. Notice the port range is 8000. I'm going to allow any protocol. And at this point, you're supposed to log in here, and it wants you to type in admin and then confirm the password change. So I'm going to go ahead and give it my password, which is going to allow me to therefore enter into the website and start the process of playing around with the product. So I'll go ahead and click OK here. Notice I've navigated to that URL, and now we're going to start taking a look at uploading data. All kinds of different data can be uploaded and analyzed with Splunk. We're looking at a list here. We're going to actually work with a few of these in just a moment. So we're going to go ahead and click Add Data. And we're going to skip here the tour because we, we know what we're going to do here. We're going to click on Upload in a moment. But first, look at all the different data types that I can actually go and ingest and analyze and search through. So we're going to do some basic stuff here in a moment. But this just gives you an idea of what's possible. Now, we're going to index that data after we import it, and the results are stored as events. And so we're going to be able to actually search through this. Let's go ahead now and upload. We're going to select that zip file we previously downloaded here. So go ahead and click Select File. Notice tutorials.zip from before. We're going to process this file. Go ahead and click up Next after you've selected that file and review. Sure enough, we're going to set a few things here, the segment path. Um, the first of the host, we have just one host, it'll be one, and we'll go ahead and process that data. So once we've done that, we're going to be able to start doing some searching on that imported data. So we're going to walk through a couple quick examples of what you can do with search. Go ahead and click on Start Searching. We're going to skip the tour here once again here, and notice right away we're looking at the results of the parsing of the data. We're in the app searching and reporting here of my zip file, but let's go ahead and click um, the search and reporting once again. It'll bring us here to the search window. Go ahead and click data summary, and we can take a look at what's happened here. We have our data sources, a bunch of log files for web, for sales, and for log files. And then the type of log files is also mentioned. So kind of a nice little interface here to be able to look at the data sources that were imported and that we'll be able to search. So here, for example, we're looking at our web logs here. And we can take a look here and dive deeper into what people were clicking on and logging. So here, once again, let's take one of these files for as an example of what we want to do here. Let's go ahead and look at vendor sales here and really see what's happening here with respect to sales. We'll go ahead and click Search and type in Buttercup Games. And this refers to the fact, in fact, some of the products we'll be selling. And again, this allows you to quickly and easily enter in the products you want to search for and then go and look and analyze them. Notice a nice little graphical interface here. You can also constrain things to time as well. So anyway, just a quick introduction of what the product looks like. You import the data and there's a nice visual dashboard to do some searches. So thanks for watching and that's it for this particular tutorial.